this is Sid. Welcome to uh, the next installment of whatever it is that we're doing here. Um, I'm going to invoke the name of Joe DiOrio. I would do that anyway because he he's uh, one of the masters that always has words of wisdom. Uh, but he's particularly on my mind because we just lost him uh, the day before yesterday. Uh, and he and I were very close, and I'm very, very fortunate for that. I won't, uh, uh, I, I can't underestimate that. Uh, he's, uh, he gave me this guitar. I haven't worn this t-shirt, we will be together again since the, uh, since 2007, the benefit concert when I got it. But uh, uh, one thing that, uh, the uh, one of the most important words of wisdom that I can think about that he said to me, but it's true, uh, where whatever the source is, you're always on book one, page one. And uh, whenever we would talk, I would say, "What are you working on?" And he said, "I'm at book one, page one." So that being said, let's let's start. Uh, one of the lessons I got from Joe is to take a, a motif from Bach, for example, and just take that one motif and take it through each scale step. So you would, uh, uh, you know, each one would alter because it would be diatonic to the key, so the, the motif would change. Uh, and that's a, a fantastic exercise to develop your vocabulary. So let's just take that attitude to each scale step with the very first move. Remember, page one, book one will get you very, very far. Jimmy Weibel said that he didn't know but just a few basics. So this is one of the basics. This is C and E. And then there's the, uh, the chromatic to the fifth. Now let's just elaborate with that. The second degree is D minor. There's D and F. Chromatic to the fifth. same melody with just a counter melody. friend of mine who uh, his name is Alan Copeland he's still around he's still writing still playing and he's in his 90s uh, he was an orchestrator and um, music director for a lot of projects uh, of Henry Mancini and like everybody who worked with Henry Mancini they all idolized him everybody did he was such a, a marvelous composer and he asked him one day, now he realized he, to, to be where he was, he was already a very advanced musician. Uh, he said, Hank, how do you come up with these great voicings and these great chord progressions? And Mancini said, you know, I don't think about that. I just find a nice melody, and then I find a counter melody. And then when I would watch my friend write, he wrote like that, he would write one line, and then he would write another line underneath it. He didn't stack things this way. So the, if you just use the four of the chord, uh, of, this, of the key, the F, against the melody, that's the subdominant sound. So that's going to give you the energy of the two or the four, obviously. Uh, and then that's going to sound more like the one, the four to the one. There's the F. has that subdominant energy and then that has the energy of home one
chords are very fattening. But every once in a while, it's nice to have them. And that's definitely fattening. So this is the B minor 7 flat 5 now. This is the open voicing. Here's the melody, here's the root. And then when that arrives at G sharp, that gives me the sense of E major. And then there, here's our cadence that we were talking about. It's no surprise that F is the root. We feel it because we just came from the... Mm, is heard even if we don't... And the E is still ringing, so this simple F major triad sounds like F major 7th because our open string is still ringing from before. say well when we go from C to C seventh to A to A flat is the A flat F minor or is it B flat seventh and the answer or is it D minor seven flat five and the answer is yes you know if you say okay I know my triads pretty well I can go F minor F minor F minor but if you if you can go through the progression in one spot then the guitar is going to let you know what you need to work on because a question you always ask yourself, well, what should I work on? Well, sometimes the guitar is very happy to tell you. And that's one way. Just see if you can navigate through the cycle of fifths, through, through this tune, for example, in whatever area of the neck, without moving. And then the guitar will tell you where you, know, where, where you need to uh, focus. So that's, that's uh, one technique of knowing, and, and knowing your thirds, like I said, when we did this exercise, we, we had to focus in on the thirds. Now, in, uh, in bebop music, and this came from Baroque, I think the, the languages are very, very similar, uh, we're ornamenting chord tones, basically, is the, is the name of the game. Uh, now, we have to be in touch with the third, because you know the, the the root is the the root is going to be understood by the voice leading so that's a minor third minor third major third major in this progression major third major third major third so that's basically the melody now the minor third, we approach this way. B up a D. Now there's a B. It's a pull off, and that lands on one. So we're counting one and two and three and four and one. Take the bridge.
on your 7-5-5 in our melodies. 